and welcome to an emo girl's guide to the galaxy where we debate rant and curse too much if you like books sarcasm and hate the patriarchy then you've come to the right place hello i'm loretta and as of the recording of this episode i can finally say happy pride month yay Yay. um we wanted to highlight some of our favorite pride books all month long while we record uh during recording so i'm going to start by screaming about the books i've already screamed at everyone about (laughs) which is heartstopper um i read the web comics but there are graphic novels now and they're by alice oseman and they're so good (laughs) everyone needs to read them if you're into graphic novels or web comics and the show is really cute you can watch the show if you want to do that instead but um it's so good and it has such a great message and found family and i love it and then um check please is also a graphic novel and that's about um a guy who gets a scholarship for hockey in college and then he falls in love with one of the guys on his team and it's also really adorable with found family and really good characters so read those yes um And now I will give you the updates that are coming out. All of these updates are coming out on June 14th. And in keeping with the pride theme, the first one is called The Lion Ladies by Melissa Gray. Um, In the summary of the summary I put together is Kiki DeSanza and Anna Lazama de Urenza. I'm sorry if I say that wrong. Or proper 17th century ladies by day, but by night they're wielding swords and muskets and getting into trouble, all while falling in love with each other. But when Kiki's engagement to, to the, is it Viceroy? The yeah. Roy? Viceroy's son is announced, her older brother is murdered mysteriously, and Kiki and Anna start their own investigation to find out what happened. It's a YA romance and it sounds really cute. All right, valiant ladies. I'm all for ladies wielding, wielding muskets. Yeah. Musket swords. I'm here for it. Bayonet. I'll take it. <laughs> um, and then Mirror Mended is coming out by Alex E. Harrow. It's the second book in the Fractured Fabled se- fa- Fractured Fables series. The first book is called A, Spin- a Spindle Splintered. And um, I put together a summary of the first book because I read the summary of the second book and had no idea what it was talking about. <laughs> so um, I, <laughs> I can't believe I haven't heard of these, though, because they sound really dope. Uh, the first book is um, a Sleeping Beauty retelling. Um, and it's about Xena Gray, and she has a fatal disease that no one has lived past the age of 21 who has it. So when her 21st birthday comes, her best friend throws her an ironic, like, well, I read it as ironic, Sleeping Beauty party. Because they're like, you're going to die. So let's have a party for your death. <laughs> I know. I don't know. Death party. Um, she has a Sleeping Beauty birthday party. And then when she pricks her finger on the spindle, shit happens. And I guess she falls Uh, It says something strange and unexpected happens and she finds herself falling through worlds with another sleeping beauty just as desperate to escape her fate. I don't know what that means, but I'm here for it. Intrigued. So she wrote, Alexi Hera wrote uh, 10,000 Doors of January and then uh, Once in Future Witches. And I've heard only amazing things. And I actually have all of these books and haven't gotten to them yet. So I'm sad, but I do need to read these. I feel like the the mirror mended is like a Snow White from the perspective of the evil queen retelling Ooh, cool. type story. That's the mirror thing. I'm pretty okay. sure. So she just like does these random weird urban fantasy, but fantasy. Because well, I read the summary and it was something about how she like saves a sleeping princess and she's sick of slaving sleeping princesses or something. And I yeah. didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I think it. I think it it's something cool. to do with uh, the evil okay. queen. Yeah. Are they connected? Do we know? Like, do you have to read them in order? Or I got that impression. I don't think you need to read them. I I don't know that they have continuing characters. I think it's just like this is her series of books that are she pretty much does standalone. So I'm pretty sure that you can read them separately oh. because they're just like different I got the retellings of different that it, stories. Because they were connected, but I don't know. Oh, I don't okay. know. <laughs> well, we'll have to read them to be determined. We can research. Um, and then Island Time by Georgia Clark is a rom-com that's coming out June 14th. And, um, it's about two women who are married and obviously they love each other, but their families do not love each other. Uh, one family is a very loud and loving Australian family. The other family is a very buttoned up American family. Um, 
And then I guess they go on vacation together and a volcano erupts. I was like, that seems like a terrifying thing. But a volcano erupts and then they all get stranded together and drama ensues. Um, So, yeah, that sounded cute. And then the Sizzle Paradox is one that's coming out by Lily Menon. And I'm very excited about this one. Um, It's... Macmillan describes it as the kiss quotient meets love potion number nine. So yes, please. Um, it's about a girl named Lyric Bishop who's studying sexual, sexual chemistry and romantic partners and needs to finish her doctoral thesis. Um, but she's having a hard time with her personal dating life. She wants to try to crack the sizzle paradox. The more, which is the more sexual chemistry you have with a partner, the less likely it will come to an emotional connection, but she needs help. And her best friend, Kian, uh, has never had trouble with his love life and he offers his assistance. Yeah, I'm here for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Best friends to lovers. Yes. Yeah. So that's it for the updates this week. That sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. I love it. All right. Well, then let's get into Around the Room. What is everybody up to? I will start because I don't have much. Um, my brain has been on alien smut for <laughs> a good <laughs> week and a half preparing for this episode. And I can tell you that I'm not okay. Like, <laughs> I yeah. haven't been able to We're remember all anything. I, I've been all over the place. So what I've been doing lately, reading Alien Sma and trying to get back into like my normal life. But <laughs> what about you, Loretta? I have also been reading Alien Smut. I read um, I Married a Lizard Man, which was an interesting experience. I will talk more about it later. Yeah. Uh, I also started a, an alien book called Flame Kissed. Um, and I that one wasn't traumatizing, but I was kind of bored with it. So I ended up DNFing it because I have been watching Stranger Things. And that's literally all I've been doing uh, my a whole Memorial weekend. I started season one and I watched all of it and now I have a book hangover which I don't know how that's possible from watching the show but it's <sighs> a thing that's happened yeah. to me it's possible <laughs> I'm still not finished with it but I can only imagine like Steve Harrington just does that to you oh my god yeah. it's so good you guys <laughs> I'm obsessed with this show yeah. but uh, anyway and it's kind of tied to aliens sort of but yeah <laughs> Jess what are you up to um, uh, my hair is pink. So good. It looks amazing. So Fierce. I did that. It, like, very pink. And then I, uh, actually watched the first season of Stranger Things for the first time ever. I'm way behind, but I loved it, and it was fantastic. Yeah. And I will, like, we could talk about it, but I've only watched the first season. And it was absolutely excellent. Loved all of it. So, good stuff there. Um... I also have been reading, like, re-listening to the Cricket series, like, on audio, because when you get the KU book, it comes with the Audible audio for free, too. Cool. So I'm just doing, like, a re-read by listening of some of my favorite Alien books, so. I love that. That's my favorite way to listen to audio books is rereading stuff that I already know yeah. what's going on, so you don't have to just sit there and, like, stare into dead space. <laughs> trying to focus yeah on what exactly. they're saying or i get like oh what can i do what can i do so i like on my long drives to work uh and back yeah. i just listen to it or like when i'm just doing stuff at work so nice it's nice all right aaron what do you what have you been up to um i have not been down so much of the alien wormhole with you guys mostly i've been living vicariously but i did finish reading something wilder by christina lauren which we i've definitely talked about in the previous podcast that was their new release that just came out and it's the like action adventure treasure hunter like spicy rom-com um and it was super fun it was like there was some unexpected things, like for that genre, obviously for that genre, like the rom com, because it's a treasure hunt adventure. Um, yeah, it was really good. I was like, had to really process how I felt after. So, like, I don't think I've ever read anything quite exactly this. Um, but yeah, it was a fun adventure. So I'm glad I read that as soon as it came out. <laughs> Intriguing. Yeah, I want to read it. Yeah, it's good. Um, I like want to say stuff about it, but I feel like if you're going to read it, like, I don't want to spoil certain things. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. spoil it. Yeah. Yeah, Everyone, go read it. something wilder. I want to read it. All right. Well, I think that wraps yeah. up what we've been up to for the past week. Yeah. So main topic time. Main topic time for sure. Oh, boy. Yeah. So you guys have been punishing yourselves, <laughs> reading a lot of nonsense alien Absolutely. porn for this episode. Um, I'll mostly just be talking about like some of the more regular alien stuff I've read, but I feel like we have to just 
regular we have to dive into this lizard man stuff <laughs> of the non-sexual variety <laughs> <laughs> before we start though i feel like i would like to throw out if erin can do some quick research onto like the psychology behind why we read about aliens or like why we like alien yes. stuff because i know a ton of people who like alien books like it's not like it's just like a niche fetish thing like there's so many books about no like there are so many people who are obsessed with alien smutty books or just alien stuff in general and i'm like i can kind of get it but i don't really get it like the fantasy idea where we know we're not alone and they must be hotter somewhere else right (laughs) like I don't know. Or, you know, green and lizardy. That's what I'm saying. Like, where does it, where's the fine line? Like, I can get an alien who's humanoid and who kind of looks like me, but then, like, lizard man and being like, <laughs> oh, this is really good. Like, this human girl's getting it on with the lizard. I just, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I tried to look some stuff up about this, and, like, I don't think there's a lot of, re- like, research or anything that's, like, been done into why we like aliens like this. So, like, New I psychologists started... want to research sexual <laughs> alien fetishes. Or, like, monster, <laughs> like, when it's, like, a human and then, like, a non-human. Yeah. I don't okay. know. The beauty so and the I beast know thing. how to, like, <laughs> like, how do you Google, Google that? <laughs> And it was getting a little weird. I mean, I'll Google it. Why do people like alien porn? Yeah. yeah. I mean, right Basically. now my thing says why psychology of why do we like alien smut is like on my google right now so and not not great stuff is coming up like nothing's really helpful like um so the little bit that i got just about why we like aliens in general is kind of like yeah the like we're not alone the search for meaning that there's got to be something else more interesting and exciting out there so i feel like an offshoot of that like into the smut is definitely connected like how jess said i have a hard time personally understanding it because yeah, like lizard people and like weird body parts is like this not, is not it for my me. Genre, it's not I, it. <laughs> I've been saving up all of my angst over Ice Planet Barbarians <laughs> for this episode yeah. because everybody was obsessed with that book, and there are twenty two books in this series. 22. It was so popular that the author wrote twenty two books. It's too many, and I read one, and I so okay. was like, "This is not. I'm not like I." <laughs> I don't know. (laughs) Like, it starts off at 70% of the book, the main girl who got kidnapped from Earth doesn't know how to communicate with this alien barbarian mate of hers. So 70% of the book, they're, like, miming to each other and trying to figure out, like, what what they're saying. And at 70% of the book, they've already had sex multiple times. Their first sexual encounter is non-consensual. He's like, this is my mate. I gotta go down on her. Like, she oh, yeah, she's weird. passed out. She's passed out. And then he, she wakes up and she's like, huh, what's going on? I feel like someone's, like, going down on me. And she's like, oh, this isn't a dream. There is this <laughs> blue alien with horns and fur. <laughs> like going down I on me hate everything about i this. don't understand it was so and then I don't and know. then she's like i'm gonna let you I'm finish, let you finish yeah, but... she's like you know what if this is what you want <laughs> like i'm not gonna stop you and then i'm gonna freak out afterward and say like i shouldn't want this but like it i kind of did enjoy it what's wrong with me and then they finally find like a ship that was able to like download her his language into her brain because obviously like alien technology sure and then they're able to communicate with each other 70 percent into the book like they couldn't have put that in the beginning of the book i think that was my issue like if they would have done the communication thing five percent into the book and they were able to talk to each other the whole time like maybe but they traveled together in this, like, ice planet weird alien world that she has no idea what's going on. And she's like, oh, yeah, this hot blue alien dude that I can't even talk to, I'm just going to let him, like, see me naked, fill me up, go down on me. Like, <laughs> sure, like, let's get like let's get it on. It's, even though sure. a ton of people are into these books, I feel like it still is, like, some kind They're of so weird, popular. just, like, kinky fantasy. Like, it's weird, and it's not for everyone. And then I think, like, probably people read it, who aren't super into it, but it's just like almost like a car crash. Like you can't look away. Like you're just like, I have to be that's like, I was reading, I it. reading it. Like, what the yeah. hell is this? But now I'm hooked. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, you just get in too deep. I, I did not get hooked. I just read the one and I was yeah. like, we're good. I think I've done my done job. <laughs> also, I would like to point out that 
In Ice Planet Barbarians, she is with, like, several other kidnapped human women, and they send her out to go, like, find help. And it takes her all of this time because she's so busy having sex with this blue alien that she doesn't even know how to talk to. And she's like, oh, I'm the worst savior ever. They're, they're counting on me. And she can't even... The dad's like, no fucking shit. <laughs> Go save these girls. I was like, we 100% think you are the worst yeah. savior ever. And then You're they, just like, not even a savior. They finally make it back to the crash ship like weeks later and these girls are like starving cold freezing like almost dead and she's like i'm so Bitch, sorry this is your but fault. like i found my mate i i had to get like, follow him <laughs> sorry you almost died i found my mate <laughs> don't worry guys there's a lot of other blue aliens for you too so like at least like brought you back something on my trip oh, my God. <laughs> no. sorry you almost starved to death i brought you back some dick <laughs> Blue dick. <laughs> Blue dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Part of me kind of gets it because, like, I'm sick of humans, too. Like, we're the literal worst. Yeah. So, like, obviously, maybe them. we need to look off planet. But also, I was reading my book and scale. he had scales. So I just couldn't get behind it. I was like, can't do this. He had a dick that extruded. He could, like, put it away and then take it out. My brain was kind of confused about... <laughs> the story too because it was a story that i would actually enjoy normally but then like he had scales and i was like oh no <laughs> but it's about a girl who um she's from a planet that's matriarch matriarchal and she had she's the third daughter so like she knows she's never getting like inherited she's not getting any land they're all farmers she's never getting any land because she's the third daughter i mean she has no right. chance so she ends up going to a um an alien uh, matchmaking uh, service and they match her um they have like a great success rate and she's matched with this guy with skills and she was like really and he's like no trust me and she's like fine whatever i don't really have a choice so she goes and she marries this guy who's from who's like the head of a tribe and he <laughs> does he have a lizard face because yeah it he's like voldemort way. with scales kind of <laughs> like he has no nose <laughs> oh he has no hot. nose sexy that's what the no nose thing made me think of voldemort he has like yeah. slits instead i thought of the dude the villain from spider-man who injects himself and then he turns into a lizard oh, like yeah the, li the lizard too, like yeah, a, oh, yeah. a lizard man who can talk and speak and stuff but he just looks like and he, a big lizard he has dreads but they're like scale dreads like he doesn't have hair he has like they he can't move them they're like hair but they're not hair i don't know how to describe them you're describing then, it well enough i, I picture i don't you. know um and then yeah they don't wear clothes so they're like why are you wearing those clothes and she's like uh please let me wear clothes <laughs> and they're like okay fine you weird human um and then they, their skin is really tough because it's scales so like they like hit each other and stuff all the time and then you know they do it to her and she's like bruised for she's like getting weeks. bruised yeah um and his dick extrudes that was really weird yeah they just have sex too and in, in their tribe like the women can just like <laughs> they can just do it like they don't need any foreplay she has to teach him what foreplay is <laughs> it was hilarious oh god <laughs> Oh, <laughs> weird. yeah. I, I think that's the other piece of, like, the psychology that I'm thinking of now, like, with the alien smut. It's, like, that, the weird sex unknown, like, the misconceptions or the unknowns is really interesting because, like, even in, like, a fantasy where it's, like, a werewolf or a vampire, like, they know what sex is. They know how to have sex. So, like, I guess it yeah. is, like, that's a different element with, like, a fantasy, like, a alien True, book if yeah. they have like different body parts yeah. or they're like we do sex you can make up whatever you or, like want. what is yeah you can make up whatever you want where it's like they have to like learn how to have sex together in a very different way than like other fantasies so like maybe that's part of the appeal interesting okay i'm gonna uh give you the brief claimed by an alien warrior down low <laughs> yours was a journey this book i it was a very insane journey <laughs> okay setting the stage this girl is leaving her shitty ex-boyfriend. She's in a car at a rest stop. She starts driving and all of a sudden four arms come around her while she's driving on the highway because safety, oh you know, um, and he's like, keep driving. And she's like, I don't know what's happening. She turns around. 
giant ass, uh, green, four armed, four eyes, <laughs> buff with Absolutely claws. Not. Alien is in her back seat. He does have like a hot uh, elf ear fangs thing going on, but the eyes on the side of the head really stressing me out. Um, uh, no. be- yeah, I could have yeah. done without those extra arms and extra eyes. Yeah, but <laughs> he was very scaly. And he's like, no, keep going. So he basically, like, kidnaps this girl to try to get him to his ship because he's been held by the government for years and, like, been tested on. And all of his shipmates died in the testing. And he's the last alien on the planet. So he's, like, escaping from quarantine, which is fun. Yeah. But she's like, I just want to get to Indiana to my friend. (laughs) And he's like, right, but you're going to help me. So she's, like, a hostage. Yeah. Which is okay, right? Like, it's a fun story. Yeah, the concepts of all of the alien books that I've read are really good. It's just the weirdness and of, And then there's, like, like alien sex, and it's creature. weird. Yeah, that's where it goes, it goes too far for me. When you turn into, like, having two dicks, and you're like, it's a mating dick. Like, <laughs> it's a mating dick. No. Yeah, that's a little extreme. Let me tell you about this dick. Okay, so... It's a mating dick. What she explained was, like, a stargazer lily. That was the term. If you don't know what a stargazer lily is, go Google it. It's a beautiful flower. So essentially, he just has a big old dick. They have sex, but the top of his dick has ridges for her pleasure. And she says rib for her pleasure. Oh. Yes, she does. Uh, of course okay. she does. They have sex, and he's like, and she goes to get off, and he's like, you can't move, because she had felt a burning oh, sensation. God. Because once they come... Their dick goes like this, and the little piece comes out and shoots the There's stuff, piece and it's like out. burning hot. I can't. And it hooks, and it hooks, and you just have to wait what? for a while because, like a dog, you know how dogs like they get tied up and they can't yeah, yeah. get out. I no, not yeah. You not just like down. have to chill until it all comes back, and yeah. So what? then he gets out of her, and she's like, "Oh, it looks like a stargazer lily." He did not warn her. He's like, "Oh, your dicks don't do that," and she's like. <laughs> Never have I, I ever seen that. I hate this. <laughs> Gross. Wait, it opens and then something comes out? Or are you talking about his cum? No, something comes out. Something comes out and hooks Ew. into her and stays there what? until it's done. I'm not... I'm not envisioning a flower when I think of this. I'm envisioning one of those drain things that you put into a drain and it pops open to grab out all of the, like, gross stuff from the sink. Eh, I'm thinking no. of Stranger Things. With the this is like an alien movie oh, yeah. <laughs> where their head comes apart. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah, you're right. Stranger oh, yeah, Things. That's uh-huh. exactly what it is. But something <laughs> comes out of it. Yeah. So, um, but like, imagine they're putting in your IUI. So it like goes through there to inject yeah, deep no. in there. And I'm like, like in your cervix? You're going to tell me that his little things go past that's that? That's so yeah. extremely I'm unnecessary. Out. Guys, <laughs> I like, literally, what? woman is like you know what would be hot if something went through my cervix which Fuck is no. always painful and usually medicated no. yeah I there's can. generally some anesthesia happening but no we're just gonna oh my god right on through there uh, wait talk about the ending though because it's the ending's crazy god what happened at the ending i blanked it all out doesn't he like take her onto his ship or something and then oh uh, and yeah. they're like souls connect or i don't know well, so he can disappear and stuff, but, like, he's like, you're my mate, and you're my thing, and it happens, whatever. So, yeah, she dies, and he, like, puts his... So all of these ra- aliens have tiny little robots <laughs> that have been injected into you them, know. and they uh, are yeah, repairing their this. skin and stuff constantly to keep them alive. So there's, like, tiny little bots in his skin that, like, keep him, uh like, healthy and repair his wounds and uh give him special powers, like, he can go invisible, and he can fly for, like... He can't really fly. He can, like, jump super high. And then when he gets down, he's got to regenerate. So, like, some type of... It's, like, magic, but it's alien bots. Like, little injectables. So he, like, cuts himself open and puts his injectables into her to repair her body to bring her back to life because she actually dies. And it brings her back to life. But then their bots have melded. So now, like, they can connect in their minds and like she's got a long lifespan and she can now get pregnant because before she couldn't obviously but now that you have my robots in you <laughs> and our robots are talking to each other you can now physically carry my baby that makes so, sense so <laughs> you okay, know cool. i buy it i buy it yeah 
I'm not I'm not convinced that I you know it was literature. <laughs> I I do like the cover. The story was cool, but some of the details could have been a little bit different. There was a fun plot. There were some cool little details. Could I personally have sex with a four-armed, four-eyed, green, scaly guy? Fuck Likely no. no. <laughs> but um, no. The train wreck was great. It was it was a very fun thing to witness and scream about. The thing about. I appreciated about mine is that like <clears throat> the matchmaking service specifically says like, hey, I matched you with this guy and you're like compatible, like you can have kids with him. Like like they took that in, into consideration like obviously some aliens she probably couldn't. Um, and then I also appreciated that like the world was set up pretty decently. So um there was, like, one government for all the planets, so there was an overarching language that everyone kind of knew. It was, like, the universal language, but then they each had their individual languages, mm. so I was like, oh, that's nicely thought out. Yeah. 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 In Ice Planet Barbarians, they're having sex, and she's thinking to herself, well, you know what's good? At least I can't get pregnant. Who, why would you think that? <laughs> but, like, okay. Don't assume and that. Then, and then later on down the line, she gets pregnant. And he's like, yeah, we're going to have babies. Like, that's what you guys are here for. And she's like, I thought I couldn't get pregnant because you're an alien. Like, oh, my God. I don't understand. Make it make yeah. sense. But I also I also read two other Kindle Unlimited books for this episode. Oh, so I have one that's not really very good and one that is. So I'll start off with, like, the bad stuff and we'll end with the good stuff. <laughs> Wait, can I share... Can I share really quick? Have you guys seen the movie The Shape of Water? No. No. Okay. No. Well, I don't think it's you're going to be your jam, but it was a Guillermo, <laughs> Guillermo del Toro movie. and I, I did want to see it. It won all those awards, I think, but mm -hmm. it's fucking weird. It's like this like fish man that they have in some kind of like facility, and this girl like works there. I, I think she's like a custodian or something. I don't know. She's not like part of the science piece, and they have him there like to do research on, and she like befriends him, but they cannot speak to each other because he's a fish man, so they don't share language. And then like, yeah. I guess she was just like felt something for him and then like rescues him out of there and then they fall in love and they have sex and it's fucking weird and she's like he's just like blank on the front and looks like he has no dick at all so like later a friend is like asking her like how did you do that and she's like like it oh she like makes her hands like he like just opens up and then it like comes out so it's kind of like jess's dick story um uh, that's what mine then, did kind of Oh, yeah. And then, but he is, like, an underwater creature, so she, like, filled up her whole apartment with water, and they're just, like, floating around in the bathroom <laughs> underwater, like, somehow that like worked, it. and, like, having sex underwater, and she's just holding her breath. It was so strange. I hated every moment of yeah, it. Yeah, that's not... That doesn't sound like something but I was like, like, all no. I don't <laughs> That's what I'm saying, like, caveat, we don't really like alien smut, but, like, for everybody else that does, like, cool, cool, cool. We're, we did the work for you, but, we like... We enjoyed the ride, yeah, the research no was good. Shaming here, like, everyone likes what they like. I do have some books that I can recommend. Yeah. I got some books that I liked that I will talk about. So, my last two Kindle Unlimited smut stories, or Kindle Unlimited alien smut stories, are... The Ascension Saga, which is, like, an interstellar brides story. And the concept is really good. Like, I downloaded the book because the story sounded really interesting. And it's about this alien queen who flees her planet because somebody tries to, like, have a coup. They, like, try to... They, they kill her husband, the king. She flees because she's pregnant. And they have these, like, lights on their planet that say the queen is still alive. So, obviously, there's somebody living that can take over the kingdom. And she goes to Earth. And so, her daughters grow up knowing that they are, like, from an alien planet. And there's everybody in the world knows that or in the galaxy knows that they're aliens. So, the mom gets kidnapped and the, the sisters go try to find their mom. They're like, we have to go back to our home planet. Mom's somewhere. Gotta go save her. But then things get weird because then you find out that, like, alien women from this planet go through basically what I'm gonna say is, like, heat. Like, at one point in time, they just, like, have a hunger for sex. <laughs> and the only people in the galaxy who can, like, stop the hunger and craving for the sex are men from the planet but then the men from the planet are virgins until they find their mate like their junk just doesn't work until they find like the, the one and so the main dude 
the main dude is like this soldier who's going to protect these three people who he doesn't even know who they are. And while he's like on his way to meet them, he goes, yeah, I'm just like sitting here thinking about like a naked girl and like it doesn't really do anything. Like I don't feel I don't have any feelings down there. I don't get it. And then he sees the main girl and then like all of a sudden he's like fighting off all these assassins and he has this like huge erection. <laughs> he's like, I'm hoping that nobody like notice my erection while I'm fighting assassins and trying to like save everybody's Put life. That but like that's down. fine. Oh, wait. <laughs> And then, like, the rest of the book is the main girl, like, having sex with this dude that she just met because they're mates and they, like, get it on in his apartment while her siblings are, like, in the other room listening to them. And then, like, it's just... Okay. And then they, like, tell him, okay, we're done. Like, my craving has been satisfied. Like, my hunger, whatever, it's over. Now you need to drive me over here. And then they, like kick him out of the car, and they're like, we're sorry we didn't tell you who we really were, but we're princesses. He gets captured, Uh. they leave him, and then on to the next book that I didn't read. So the concept is there. The sex could have been better. (laughs) It was just not, I was like, okay, this is too far. Like, I'm uncomfortable. I get it. I get, like, the whole fantasy of, like, virgin men and, like, how they're the ones who can't have sex until they find, like, the girl. Like, I I get it, but, like, at the same time, it could have been done better. Uh, the execution wasn't there yeah. for me. But so if you're thinking about reading it, I say no. But if that sounds interesting to you. Cool. <laughs> um, and then, and then the last one that I read, which was a lot better to me than Ice Planet Barbarians oh, yeah, and I this forgot. one. I wanted to read is this one. The Alien Bride Lottery. And I just I downloaded it because the covers looked really fun. Um and I was, I actually had a lot more fun than I thought I would because I was just so depressed over the other ones that I read. I was in a rage. <laughs> um, and I was just like, let's continue on with these bad stories. But it's basically how to lose a guy, how to lose a guy in 10 days meets America's next top model meets like The Bachelor. So. Earth is being protected. Earth is being protected by like this other ra- alien race, right? This alien species. And the alien species that's protecting Earth from like the bad aliens was poisoned in warfare. So the men of the of the species or the women can't have kids. So the way that they have kids is they the alien men mate with human women. And so every year, once you turn, what, 21 or whatever the age is, your name gets entered into the bride lottery. So like, a la Hunger Games. Um, And then you just like get entered in every year plus whatever. So the main girl, it's her first year. And she's like, obviously, I'm not going to get picked. I only have one entry in this. And of course, she gets picked. And so she's like, I'm just going to do whatever I can to make this not work. No one's going to pick me. And everything's televised. So it's like a reality matchmaking show with these alien men and human women. And she is like, I'm going to be the worst contestant out there. I'm going to wear all of the ugly dresses. I'm going to do all I can to make (laughs) them hate me. And then the main guy, obviously, is like, she's wearing the blue of my race. She did this on purpose. I love her. I'm obsessed (laughs) with her. She's the one. And I was really into it. And the only thing that was weird about the alien dudes was, like, they were color. They have colorful skin, if from what I remember. Yeah. And this is the dude who had two dicks. He has the regular dick and then his mating dick. (laughs) And they're, like, having sex and then the mating... It's not the color of their skin that's bothering me And then the mating dick comes out and she's like, what was that? He was like, it's my mating dick. You're the only one who's ever felt that. Like, you're special because you're my mate. And How does that work? Are they next to each other? Are they on top? No, it's, like, like inside. So it's, like, the main one and then it opens up. Yeah, and then, like, pops out. No! What is with all of these expandable dicks? <laughs> like, that was, like, the only weird part about it for me was, like, the extra long expandable penis parts of the blue it's alien. Like push the surprise inside. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it was. She was like, what? And he's like, yeah. That is not a Cracker Jack. So, anyway... Alien Bride Lottery, I'm into. I kind of want to finish the series because they're going to follow it like the other alien people. It sounds yeah. like my jam. But that one was really <laughs> fun. It didn't have any other than like, you know, the mating dick cringy scenes or cringy anything. So that was like my recommendation in terms of alien smut. And my 
my long story short is that I love alien books and alien stories, but I think I have to stick to like adventure yeah. stuff. Like I can't yeah. I can't mix the smut with the aliens. It's aliens and like maybe a little romance, but mostly we're trying to save the world and yeah. not like you're my mate. I'm gonna eat you out while you're unconscious. <laughs> like that's not my yeah, thing. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. I think I'm in the same boat. But I do have, I do have a lot of alien books that I do recommend that are just not smut. So we can go there yeah. if that's like our next step into this. Is like alien books we did well, like. So I have a. I have one that is, it's not just straight smut. It's actually like, I don't think it gets steamy until book two, but I know that I talk about the Cricket series a lot, but it does get steamy. That's why I'm like, oh yeah, we love it. Um, So the Cricket series by Amy Bartol is, this girl's just on earth. She's just chilling. She's hanging out. And all of a sudden these hot guys start running at her and are like, but she's been running from, like she's 17. She's going to turn 18 in like a week. And she's been in the foster care system her whole life. And so she's literally just trying to hide from CPS um, because she just doesn't want to go back to some other house. So she's been like chilling in an apartment on her own in Chicago, having a great time working under the table jobs. She's almost done. And all of a sudden these like rip talk guys just start like running after her going, you need to come back. You need to come back. And she's like, what is happening? And they're like, but she's sassy and she's like, get out of my face. I'm pepper spray you in your face. Go away. And it's great. But some of them get her and they take her to this hole in this cave and they have to like put her underwater and like go through this cave with all this gear on. And she feels like squished and it's a wormhole to the other planet because they're like, you're not even from Earth. You're not even human. I don't know why you think you're human. Your eyes are purple. And she's like, I think they're blue. And they're like, they're literally purple. So, you know, (laughs) and doing that whole thing. And she's like, yeah, but it's okay. And they're like, if we cut your hair off, it grows back instantly and turns to ash. So you don't think that's weird. And she's like, I don't know. (laughs) So, So they go diving in this cave and essentially they keep swimming through it. And it's a wormhole to their planet. And so it's kind of like, I don't know if the science is there, but they find a wormhole and it goes through and then they're in this other planet where they've got like saber tooth tiger type cats and like the planet's been at war and they're like, we're bringing you back because you're the last priestess of something or other. And they're just trying to turn her over. So there's one group of three guys and one group of three guys. One's dark haired, one's blonde. And they're arguing, you know, like it's so it's great. That's the beginning of it. And then like. They've got flying cities and stuff, but they've also got like a full blown war happening. And she's she's got that same power where a uh, cat from Kingmaker is where she can tell if you're nice. lying. But she's instead of like cat where she's like, I'm not telling anybody about my power. Cricket's like, oh, yeah, you're lying, bro. And he's like, what? And she's like, yeah, you're <laughs> lying to my face. <laughs> so like she just doesn't even hide it. But then she starts to like come into her powers and stuff. And then there's like the whole deal. So. It's excellent. It's really fun. On my reread, I am less enamored than I was the first round by the guys, probably because I know the whole story and stuff. So I'm like a little less. It's great. I'm a little more like, hey, he's kind of being a dick. Why do you like him so much? <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting. I have it on my list to read Me now. Too. I just haven't gone to 10 it. 10 out of but... 10. It's excellent. The audio is not bad. Um, it's a trilogy and it's lots of fun. And it kind of has an open ending at the very end. So. If you really don't want that, I would not read it, but it's worth the read. So Also going into kind of smutty, but not really alien romances, we have to talk about Lux by JLA. Of course. Um, mm-hmm. Which also has a spinoff series called Twilight? the Origin Series. <laughs> I love it. Which is my preference. Alien Twilight. But yes, Lux to me is Alien Twilight, and I hate the characters so much, but I love the crazy train wreck <sighs> roller coaster, like weird alien plot. I like, stand that series. It gets I can't wild. even remember if I finished I it. it. I think I finished it and all. And those aliens are also like, they're like what? Weird, like light balls. Yeah. Like, like yeah, balls energy. of light and then they go yeah and they get go into human bodies so i'm like i can handle that like i'm cool if i don't have to see your weird alien <laughs> body if you're in a human body yes. like yeah right yeah you're an alien but you look like me i'm all yeah. for it let's do it yeah but i i like the plot of look so if you're looking for like a fun ya alien 
series to read. That's a good it's one. It's crazy but drama. The, I would read it. It's so fun. I would read it only for the fact that you can then read the origin series, which is a spinoff. And it's so much better. Right. Like, the plot of that is eerily similar to the things that happened surrounding COVID. So if you're kind of still, like, oh. not cool with any of that Over stuff, that. yeah, I would say, like, wait a while. They even paused writing the fourth book in the series because when COVID hit, she was planning, like, the fourth, fifth, whatever series. And then she, her and her publisher were like, yeah, because of, like, the Maybe similarities <laughs> happening right now, we're going to pause we're gonna on this. We're going to read the room. Yeah, we're going to pause, and this is not going to be a longer series anymore. Like, the fourth book is going to be the last book because we don't want to continue on with this stuff. And then I thought to myself, like, JLA usually writes the craziest stories that she can think of that you would think never would happen. And the fact that the origin series is just, like, so close to real life. real life i'm like this is is she a fortune teller or are we <laughs> yeah. just living are we living a reality that is just so crazy that you can't even like comprehend it anymore but i yeah. loved the origin series and everything about it so i say read that one if you're into aliens yes i stay on love it. forever it's i just read it at like the right exact time in my life that i, I became so obsessed and then i was like really wanted to find other alien stuff out there. And I actually heard about the Blue Bar- Barbarians right after I finished that series and I was, like, Googling for, like, um, alien romance books. And I was like, this is not what I meant. <laughs> that, that, that's not what I meant at all. We're going in a different direction. I also really liked Ender's Game. If Have you guys read that one? No, I have that on my shelf. Mm-hmm. And it's been there forever and I haven't picked it up. It's a, it, Again, it's one of those, like, more, like, Star Trek, Star yeah. Wars classic alien books yeah. except you don't really know the plot twist like there and it's one or maybe it's two books i don't know if it's a series but the first one is really good and um there isn't a lot of romance in that at all it's like kids training to learn how to be pilots to stop aliens from taking over humanity um well, i love so star I like wars that and one. star trek like all of that is my jam it's so good and i love yeah, being in fun. that world where there's like crazy aliens but yeah i don't like I don't want anyone having sex with, like, Jabba the Hutt or like, yeah, Jar Jar Binks. Just, no. <laughs> Fucking weird-ass body parts. Yeah, we don't, we don't need, like, Wookiee fan no. fiction. No. We're, no. we're fine. <laughs> oh, I'm sure all oh, yeah. of that exists. Maybe that's where it came from. Also, if you're into Star Wars and Star Trek, I really recommend the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. So, Jess, you actually that. got me the first book for my birthday I did my birthday or Christmas one of those and I was obsessed it was so good the first book it's like a moody heroine who is like an outcast and she's like I'm gonna prove myself I'm gonna be a pilot I'm gonna show all all these alien bastards like what I got and then you also have like a sassy AI ship who is like her bestie um and then of course she travels away and finds out that there's like a huge galaxy full of all of these other aliens so it's kind of like Top Gun meets Star Trek meets Star Wars um and the series series isn't done yet but the first three books are out and I haven't read the third book but the first two are really good and I'm obsessed so if you're looking for something that's a little bit more YA but in the same realm of like Star Wars Star Trek Skyward is really good I feel like I also need to like scream about Red Rising now because it's it's like <sighs> I've been trying to figure out if that's but like they're, alien like, all different planets, and, and it they're is different- like, they're all from different planets and stuff, but they were humans that went out and yeah, populated, but they've, like... a little bit. A lot of it. Yeah, they've severely evolved, especially on the one planet. Yeah. Like, they're huge, and they're all of different... Like, their eye colors are all either gold yeah. or red or whatever in their too, hair like, and all of that, so... manipulation was part of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, for the purposes of this episode, Red Rising is really good anyway, so just yeah, read it. It's like, so good. It's just <laughs> it amazing. Matter. Read that series. Yeah. There isn't any smut, so like... Yes, it's ve- again, like, it's very much adventure, like, hardcore, like, gory, I would so say. Good. There's a lot of fighting. It also reminds me, at least a part of it, of Gattaca, yes. which I know I talk to you guys about Gattaca. all the yeah. time, but I love that movie. It's so good. So good. And... I'm obsessed. But anyway, Red Rising, I've only read the first book, but I also agree, read it. The only other book I can think of that's alien y that I really enjoyed was Aurora Rising. I, I love that series. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't read the third one yet because I'm scared of it. I but, haven't either. Um, that's a really good series. 
Um, I also have the Lunar Chronicles on my oh, list. Yes, yes. So mm-hmm. I love Lunar Chronicles. How could I right? We can count I that. Love that series. There's Moon Moon Aliens with special powers. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah, Lunar Chronicles is really popular, but if you haven't heard of it, it is a retelling of fairy tales. Each book is a different fairy tale, um, but in space. So yeah, it is what Cinderella, Rapunzel, Cinderella, Snow White, Red Riding Rapunzel. Hood, and Snow White. Yeah. yeah, the Red Riding Hood stuff was crazy with the like wolf people. Yeah, Scarlet and Cinder that are might my be favorite. my favorite still. Those are really good. Also, let's talk about the fifth wave. I was going to bring this up. I hate. I'm so that much rage. That so mad. I'm so mad. The first book was so good. I read the first book and I was like, oh my gosh, alien drama. I'm yes. obsessed with this. And then they made they made a movie and I forced my friends to go watch it with me. And you guys, I'm like, the you guys, trash. no, like <laughs> there's not a lot of like love in there. It's like all about them fighting these aliens who come down yes. to earth. And then we sat through that movie and at the end, my friends all gave me the death glare. <laughs> like, I cannot believe you made me sit through this because they changed it and they made it all about the love story. And I'm like, uh, an really? alien love story. This is not what it's about. <laughs> And then the ending was trash, ending. and I hated it. Well, that ending, I, two series that I feel so strongly about like that is Fifth Wave and fucking Diver- the Diversion series. And I cannot yeah. get over my anger over, over those two, because it strong yeah. starts, like you said. like Strong start, cool yeah. Cool building, cool concept. Like, the characters are decent. Like, the action is then super fun. Then you had fun. to go and mess it and up. And then it's like, you just destroyed it. Like, you've just ruined yeah. all of it. I yep. don't know why. Yes. What happened? So if you want to read The Fifth Wave, just read book one and then just stop and just make up your own ending and that's, it'll be so much better than the actual ending. Okay, but I remember reading the first book and there's the part where she, her and the alien guy are like, <laughs> they like, they have this whole thing where like their souls connect and shit and I was like, are you guys having sex right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's all vague and like YA and it's like yeah like his soul comes out of his body I can't even remember it's been a long time but I was like what is going on that. I don't know it about was that. weird <laughs> that's the only thing I remember from that yeah. book and then I I looked I was I the se- I started the second book and it made me so annoyed that I read the ending what happens to the ending in the third book and I was like not finishing this series and I dodged a bullet so yeah you did 100% <laughs> yeah. that series makes me so fear it could have been so epic and they just I don't even I don't even know like I'm so mad about it I'm so <laughs> yeah I did the same thing with Divergent too <laughs> I never yeah. read those books purely because I don't like the girl who plays the main chick in the movies. So I feel like I save myself a lot of heartache and anger. I read them Wait. before the movie came out. And then when they cast her in the movie, it's like, I'm not yeah. watching these. Yeah. Did I watch them? Yes. But they changed the ending of the movie. Is it better uh, than the, the book? book? Is the movie ending better? Does she still die? The ending is better. No. Really? That's what they did in the ending. Interesting. Yeah. She doesn't die. And I watched it and I was like, uh, okay. Well, that's how. Yeah, Dude, they didn't kill her. I could go on and on about the virgin. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm enraged. Let's do a so. recap and then we can get into our game. But for everybody who has followed along, our too long didn't read synopsis is Alien Smut is not for us. But if it's for you, great. We have some good options, I guess, in this episode. But. We definitely prefer alien adventures, so if you want to dive into all of our alien adventure wrecks, let us know how you like them, and we're going to jump into our alien game today, because I'm excited. Yes, alien game. Oh, yeah. I need to find. Um, I also have one more wreck that's like a alien, but it's adventure, and then there's like low-key romance, but it's not with creatures, Mm -hmm. and that's the Starbound Trilogy by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. Mm. That one's really good, so I would add that to... It's like normal. <laughs> There's not weird stuff happening. Your bonus, your bonus, bonus rest for bonus the day, rest, guys. Because like we talked about a lot of weird stuff. That's got to be the reason that I like cricket. Is they're they're human. They're not humans, but they're more like fey because like they live a thousand yeah. years. Yeah, but they look like humans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, our niche is fairy yeah. smut. <laughs> Okay, our game today is um, 
<laughs> Alien Smasher Pass. So we came up with three different categories. Um, <clears throat> the first category is like who they look like. So it's some kind of celebrity or person that you know that the alien would resemble. Um, what their personality is and their alien features. So like, do they have a tail or whatever? I don't know. Two dicks. <laughs> And we randomize it, pick one to pick one from each category, and then we say we'll smash or pass it. So I love this. The first one is looks like Chris Hemsworth. His personality is none to speak of, <laughs> and he I can I can handle his it. alien features that he's green. I can I can say I'd smash yeah, it. I'd smash it. Yeah, I'd smash, smash it. One hundred percent. I can handle that. I would smash. Yeah. Okay, number two. Looks like Harry. Looks like Harry Styles. His personality is that shitty podcast guy. You know the one. Oh. <laughs> no, no. All right, wink. So he refers to women as females. Got it. <laughs> oh God, he would. And um, his feature is gills. Fuck no. I don't know. Mostly if I could based do that. on the podcast personality. Yeah, yeah. It's the personality, not pass. the gills. I, would I smash Harry? Yes. But Harry Styles, I would do like maybe if he didn't talk, like maybe if like he was mute or yeah, uh, like, yeah, could we like duct tape his mouth? Yeah, shut? yeah, yeah, cool. He can breathe through his gills. We'll, <laughs> we'll stick him. We'll stick him gills. underwater. <laughs> oh my god, we'll we'll fill our bathrooms with water and do a shape of he water. He speaks thing. an alien language that I don't understand. So if I don't sure. understand it's him, fine. there can be no anger. Like everything also, will be fine. Also, what kind of gills are we talking about? Like, are they tiny ones? <laughs> like on the side? Because I would wouldn't even probably notice. not. Probably yeah. not. Harry Styles could pull off any type of alien accessory, and I'd be like, "Damn, he really could." Yeah, it would be a hundred percent fine. It's the personality it's, that's, that's the taking yeah. this. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> number three is um, looks like Dustin Diamond. <laughs> for, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> for all of you who don't know, that's Screech <laughs> from Say by the Bell. Oh. Um, he uh, I'm he out. has the personality of a golden retriever, and he has bat wings. <laughs> nah, I can't do it. I'm in a smash. I would. I'm passing. I, I would do would it. Smash. I would not smash. <laughs> I, I would pass. I would not. I would not. I don't mind a curly head of hair. He's a little dorky. It's fine. Yeah. He can fly. Oh, fly. And a golden retriever is an excellent well, person. Yes. Him with like some some silver fox thing going on, and it's not. Some other ones are bad, but that one's not a bad picture. He so looks he better exactly now than he did. Like Does he? Let's take a look. <laughs> did anybody ever watch the uh, David David Spade movie, the Dickie Roberts movie? No. Like child I did star? forever ago. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Dustin Diamond is in that movie at some point, and I just, like, can't get past. Like, I can't get past everything that he's ever done in paparazzi limelight history, and I'm just like, you're just so weird. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just not... Not for me. I'm not here for it. <laughs> okay. So the last one is um, Simon from Bridgerton, the Duke who... Yeah. Um, his personality is a Pisces, and he has tentacles. <laughs> oh, the tentacles. No. I can't. No, Where are the tentacles, not the tentacles at? How bad do you want him? <laughs> Does he, like, not have legs? I or, can't. like, where are the tentacles? No. His fingers are tentacles? Doesn't matter for me. It matters for me. I don't... I don't think I can do tentacles. You get one tentacle and it's the one this in your pants. This conversation is reminding me I wanted to bring up the fact that I googled the tentacle guy from the Laurel K. Hamilton that I thought was in Anita Blake oh, yeah. and it's not in Anita Blake. It's in the Mary Gentry series. So I was incorrect. Oh. Um, it was the wrong series. But in that series, the, the guy has tentacles in, that comes out of his stomach. <laughs> That's all I can no. think about. Yeah, still not happy about the tentacles. Not. The tentacles is a no for me. Yeah, I'm can't. sorry, Jean-Pierre. That's his name, yeah. right? And I'm sorry, Simon. Oh, yeah. I can't do it. I can't do no. it with tentacles. Yeah. Do we have one more? Uh, we can do um, San Huygen. Hagen? I never know how to say it. He's the Outlander guy. San, I, don't, I always say Hugin, but I don't okay. know. I'm glad that you told me who he was because I was like, I have no idea who yeah. that is. Jamie from Outlander. Jamie from Outlander. Um, his personality is no one touches you but me, and he has gills. 
Sold. Yep. Yes. Smash. Smashing 100%. Yep. Smash. 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 1,000%. I'm in. That's an easy smash. Okay. The last one. This is a pretty good one. Um, Henry C- looks like Henry Cavill. <laughs> he has the personality of a golden retriever, but he has fur. Uh, you know what? I'm going to smash. I don't even care. Smash. Yeah, I'd probably do Honestly, it too. Honestly, he's pretty hairy anyway, yeah. so he's kind of hairy anyway. Yeah, we so can just pretend right. his yeah. hair. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, it's we'll just trim. We'll do a deep conditioning bath, and it's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Henry Cavill can have any alien esque type of things, even tentacles. No. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think tentacles is an absolute no yeah, for me ever. It. I don't think tentacles is ever getting me anywhere. Yeah, but if it's Henry Cavill. If you took off his shirt and there were just a bunch of tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. I retract my statement. Oh, my everything, ex- everything except the okay. tentacles is fine. I'm going to skip that. Got it. Yeah, no tentacles. I think always no. All right. Okay. We did it. We, we did it. it to the alien episode. Cetus Lapinus. Yes. <laughs> Cetus Lapinus. <laughs> the greatest thing I've ever done is that title. Uh, so that's it. Thank you for listening to us on this weird episode. Um, follow us on all the things. TikTok at Emo Girls Guide. TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Um, and may your day be blessed with main character energy. Main character, main character energy. energy. Oh, oh, oh.